Alright, so talk to me about what's going on right now. We've got drums happening today, you know, running in the sand, and uh, that's a beautiful thing. I've been waiting for this for a while. And, uh, I'm very excited for this. And we got somebody very special playing drums today. Who do we got? We've got uh, Mr. Steve Harley on the drums. And, uh, he's done a few tracks for us before, and I'm uh, looking forward to him doing this one today. We've got you later. What really happened is this artist started recording by himself. And then he realized he came, which was really good and unique. He realized Ben, you talk Ben, yeah, 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 talking yeah. about Ben, that he couldn't go much further. Yeah, you know, and me not being a drummer and and a, a songwriter, I know how to contribute. So what I decided to do is to bring you in. And I knew Steve from really a long time ago. He tries everybody else first, and then when that doesn't work out, he starts to make us. Because he knows how much it costs. You know, sometimes it costs costs you a lot more than you think. That's right. right. And That's right. Well, my, my, I know. <laughs> I know. But my nephew actually told me, "No, give give Steve a call." I said, "What? Really?" And he goes, "Yeah, he's a, he's a beautiful person." So I called him up, and he came down, and we talked. And one of the most wonderful things was, and I'm, I'm surprised we're not doing it now, is we had an interview and Steve goes, hey guys, you mind if you sit behind the drums? And he started tuning them as you were talking. And the next day, which was Abita, the girl he's working with, oh, yeah, yeah, she goes, Jim, these drums sound incredible. What happened? You know? I said, that was Steve for two hours tuning with the fingers. And that was Steve Holly tuning the drums. That's, and besides being a great musician, uh, and very sensitive towards songs, he, he, he tunes drums incredible. I love the way he tunes drums, has a massive collection, and of yeah, course, I love his Beatles stories. Beatles stories, <laughs> well, Paul stories. Paul stories. But uh, the other side of the coin, though, of course, is like there's no point tuning the drums unless you've got someone that knows how to record them, and it's a complete waste of time, you know. So, um, I pretty much, shortly after we met, we worked on a couple of things, right. figured out, oh, hey, this guy knows what he's doing, which makes me spend more time doing what I'm doing because I know it matters. Whereas so many situations you can walk into, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. But here I hear the difference. And so, you know, that's, 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 worth, that's worth its weight in gold, you know. So, and like today with the, with the song we're working on today, the whole key to that is it's not just tuning the drum set, it's tuning the drum set to fit the trap. Yeah, because, that's know, a, that was a big eye opener for me. That's, uh, and it's not always the same, it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's, but it's, uh, when you get results, it's worth it. Seven and nine for and then the uh, seven and nine for the kick drum maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, just be, this is, these are uh, the same maracas that are on the uh, hookup. Is that out of bed? Is that the those are from the lights, so Those are those exact ones. Uh, well, there were three pairs and <laughs> one of the three pairs, but this, this is the closest to, to any of You know, it's also at the um, at the very top. That's because he had he got all the he, he got all the maracas and stuff from the Beatles. The gave I, Paul I, gave it to him. They were in a box at Abbey Road, and I found them in this broom closet. And I asked if I could have them, and they said yes. Yeah, I know. I know that. So I liberated yeah, you weren't the, here last time. Like, is, like uh, you were away. See, when you go on the road. You know, you miss some stories like well, sing it, you'll, you'll hear Beatles what I stories. <laughs> I know I'm an old man, but. Stop. What? Real women? That tambourine was on that song? Probably. Although, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very similar sounding if it's not. It does sound like it. Season. It does. Does he know this? I asked him if I could have them. I found them in the broom closet. He probably wouldn't remember that. And I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, and I'll, I swear to God, if, it, if it's true, then I, he'd want them back. But I, I, I think he would. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot of stuff in Abbey Road. If you, uh, George Martin's uh, book, unfortunately, it says a lot of stuff that was in that closet disappeared over the years, especially the small percussive items. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> But they've been gone on 20 or thousands of records as opposed to sitting in a box in a broom closet. That's the way I look at it. All right. All right, so I'm taking a break from the Steve Holly drum session to show you guys one of the most commonly overlooked and most important stages of the recording process. Well, I love the way you orchestrated the song today. 
Well, that opens it up. You had a completely different approach from three different drummers beforehand. And it's true, I did, we did try them out. See? But I wanted to save Steve, but I, could, I, I said, nope. I well, I'm expensive, but I'm worth it. That's all there it is to it. It's, it's, it's really it. <laughs> it comes down to it. He's great. But it's true, everybody had a different a different same approach. You were actually different and it brought the song to a new life. Oh good. And that's the point of like, you know, working in bands, working with different people, in a recording studio, let's say, opposed to guys in the houses like this. Yeah, I just don't know. They could do a job, yeah. You know, just yeah. trying to get samples, you know, so Well, it I, works. It works. That's all I can say. Good shape today, Rich. What do you want? I didn't shave today either, it didn't stop me. Oh, yeah. Nobody shaved today. I woke up at like 2 in the afternoon. I don't know, man. So how, how'd you guys first meet? Like, wh how'd you guys end up hooking up? Who a long did? time ago. I know. Our name was, our name is an artist from almost 20 years ago. Melissa Murray. Melissa, was it really Melissa? And Melissa Murray, oh, great. she told me she loved you on drums. Huh. I knew of the name. I said, oh my God. And you brought also this incredible snare drum from 1950, I think it was, or 51. And I, the first day I met him, I said, oh, what a sound. It was beautiful. And that track that we did, by the way, her vocal was supposed to be a rough, a rough take. That whole take was the keeper. Huh. We couldn't change anything. Now it was great. what that drum was. I don't know that was. It was an old drum. That's how I met him. Haven't seen him since. I thought for sure I could never afford him. And all of a sudden, life goes on, and to my yeah. nephew. That's got to be my a piece. That's, that must be 20 years. 